few misconceptions that I've smelled around here today. One Richard highlighted, and I want to highlight it again. Glycemic index is not a magic thing. Uh, most of the people who promote low glycemic index uh, are talking about foods that have a glycemic index of 50% or less, which means that they will cause a blood sugar rise under the, a three-hour curve of half that of glucose. And the test is made on non-diabetics. Uh, maybe you could ask Lori if there's a way of stopping the bleeding. Yeah. Lori is the <laughs> <laughs> um, the glycemic, first of all, the glycemic index is going to vary from person to person and from study to study. And on diabetics, it's a totally different test. You don't get a slight increase over three hours. You can get a dramatic, sharp increase that lasts all day uh, with a glycemic index of 50%. On the diet that I recommend, the foods that we select have glycemic indices under 10%, as close to zero as possible. So what you read about uh, from all these experts on glycemic index is a lot of nonsense when it comes to a diabetic. That's number one. Number two, uh, it is not true that low glycemic index or low carbohydrate uh, load foods will have no effect on blood sugar control in a diabetic. Does anyone know why? If you read my book, you probably know why. You can, a diabetic can eat a handful of pebbles and his blood sugar will go up. We're going to go into this later because this has very important uh, ramifications for the modern treatment of diabetes. First, I'm going to go back to the subject that I was assigned to talk about initially, uh, which is uh, a bit of my own history. Uh, I became diabetic 64 years ago at the age of 12. Now, does that add up? That would make, yeah, I'm 76. Okay. <laughs> Uh, very, uh, in Italian they say, vecchio e scientio, old and wise. And my friends say, okay, you're old and wise, what are the other options? <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I went through the usual problems that diabetic kids went through in those days. Uh, very frequent hypoglycemia. Uh, loss of consciousness. Uh, I, at age 16, had an hypo hypoglycemic event, event where I ground my teeth and cracked this tooth, up front tooth, and uh, didn't just crack it, but chipped off uh, a corner so that I looked like <coughs> Dracula. And uh, it was only about 10 years ago that my wife said to me, you're able to straighten out your diabetes. Uh, why can't you stop looking like Dracula? <laughs> so I went to a dentist who bonded the tooth, and now it looks like a new tooth. I call it my plastic tooth. Um, but that's one of the many things that happened to me uh, as a diabetic child. Now, uh, I got married. I was warned that if I'm going to have children, you better have them very early because after the age of 30, you're not going to be able to have erections anymore. Um, and uh, we actually had four kids. The last was born when my wife was 40, and uh, that makes me about uh, 38. Uh, and fortunately, I haven't <coughs> suffered that consequence of diabetes. I was getting many severe complications of diabetes, advanced kidney disease. Uh, every time I peed, I had four plus uh, protein in my urine. This was by the age of 25. Um, I had severe gastroparesis. 
with constant burning in my uh, retrosternal area, uh, I would consume two bottles of Rolaids a week, and I think mm -hmm. there were about a hundred in a bottle, uh, and that didn't do the trick. I had burning all the time, and many other diabetic complications. I worked for a company that made clinical laboratory equipment. I was the research director. And there was an ad in the journal Lab World in 1969 for uh, a way for the emergency rooms to dis distinguish the drunks from the diabetics uh, at night when the labs were closed. We didn't have automatic laboratories then, it was all manual, and they closed at night. So you couldn't even get a blood sugar. And uh, this was a meter, a, a six pound, a three pound meter about the size of a Bible. Uh, I was an engineer. I couldn't purchase it myself. They would sell it only to hospitals and doctors. So I ordered one on my wife's stationery. Uh, it cost me 650 bucks. And I figured, I'm an engineer. If I only knew what my blood sugars were, maybe I could do something about them. Uh, I used to go to my doctor once a month to get a blood sugar, which was totally worthless because it could be anywhere. Yeah. A random blood sugar for someone who, who had one shot of insulin a day and was on a high carbohydrate diet. Um, so I started me measuring my blood sugars and started learning things very rapidly. I did little experiments, uh, like if you didn't uh, eat all day and uh, took so many grams of glucose, what would happen to your blood sugar and so on. And I discovered that one gram of glucose would raise my blood sugar by five milligrams per deciliter, and, or one gram of any carbohydrate. I, I discovered that one unit of the rapid-acting insulin that we had in the old days, which was beef pork insulin, uh, would lower my blood sugar uh, I think about uh, 30, 25, something like that. But I had numbers. I was able to work with numbers. And as an engineer, see, I'm still an engineer. Um, I uh, knew how to work with numbers. And another thing I learned was that the, the food that had the biggest effect on my blood sugar was carbohydrate. Now, in those days, the ADA was claiming that it was fat that raised blood sugar. You people are not old enough to remember that. But that was the culprit in those days, uh, aside from the supposed effect upon lipids. By the way, on my high-carbo, very low-fat diet, I had cholesterol and triglycerides both always over 300. They didn't measure HDL and LDL in those days. Um, so I had severe dyslipidemia. I once went to my doctor and I said, what's this gray ring over the iris of my eyes? He said, oh, that's Arcus juvenilis. All the type 1 diabetics have that. It's from very high cholesterol. And if you guys want to look at my eyes later, uh, Jimmy, you want to take a picture of it? <laughs> Can you close up? <laughs> right, just a second. See the gray ring? Yep. That's Arcus Juvenilis. I had that in my early 20s. Uh, you see this in the elderly who have had high cholesterol for years. It's called Arcus Senilis, the arc of the aged, uh, for those people. Um, well, here I was measuring my blood sugars, and I rapidly learned several things in addition to what I just told you. If I cut out the bread at lunch, in other words, didn't have a sandwich, my blood sugars would stop shooting up after lunch. Uh, that was the first lesson. 